So now this idiot wants to come back home. This guy, he's uh, he's known as the Bumbling Jihadi. What's up guys, this is Jian Guy. If you like my content, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe. So, before we start, this guy, uh, he's known as the Bumbling Jihadi. He got, um, ISIS kind of put him in prison after he tweet like, he put out his location, he geo, he geo tracked his location, you know, he said, oh shit, would you like to share location? He did that, he turned on the GPS, and uh, it gave away the location, that's a huge violation of OPSEC, even ISIS knows that, and this guy is, uh, he pretty much deserves his name. Let's take a look at the video. I asked the government to help me, and then eventually, it just, like, it just stabbed me in my back. Don't want to, well, it feels like they're standing in the back. Oh. Well, I thought I was under the impression that at least they could come here and take me out of here. Alright. The New Zealander dubbed the bombing jihadi as expect a little help from his homeland after being captured by Syrian forces fighting IS. Prime Minister uh, Jakinda Adrian, uh, weird uh, Aussie names, warned on Monday. Mark Taylor, 42, told the Australian Brock ABC that he spent five years in ISIS and fled in December after surrendering to Kurdish forces because conditions have become unbearable. Oh, you, you poor thing. There's no food, no money. Basic services have pretty much collapsed, he said after Kurdish pr after uh, from Kurdish prison. I was uh, a pickle myself, then he made a final decision where he was to leave. Taylor's earned a derogatory nickname in 2015 after, wow, well, this guy's uh, he's been idiot his whole entire life. She was a pro ISIS tweets for getting to turn off his geo tagged uh, function at giving away location. He told ABC that he was to end him about 50 days in bu <laughs> the bungo earned him 50 days in ISIS prison. He also burned a New Zealand passport in a propaganda video urging extremists in New Zealand to commence operations. <laughs> Prime Minister Arden ruled the stripping up uh, Taylor of his New Zealand citizenship because he was not a dual, because it was not a dual citizen. So she, she has no alternative. Okay, so what do you do with this guy? You know when uh, all these Bangladeshis and these uh, these fleeing people, they uh, try to go to Australia and New Zealand. They they put on they put them on this island to hold them. It's called uh, Nauru. And it's a, uh, it's a shitty island. It's just, it's a former phosphorus deposit, and now it's uh, it's running out of money. So all it can do is house, ha like house these prisoners. And the conditions there are awful. There's Indians and there's people committing suicide there every day. Of course, following our obligation is an international law regarding ensure we do not deem anyone stateless. She said, but she also said that New Zealand could offer Taylor no consular assistance because he has no diplomats where he's being held. And only knew that he's been cleared from the media reports. Um, we have no connection with the forces detaining him, so it's difficult for us to provide information, she said. Adding that Taylor would likely contact New Zealand officials in the Turkey he hoped eventually return home. I was in a pickle myself, and he had to make a final decision, which was to leave. Just a poor thing. Justice uh, Minister Andrew Little said what that happened. Taylor could probably expect face charges Again, under anti-terror laws, it's very clear that happens, and he transgresses the pr provisions of the legislation. There's a range of penalties, including imprisonment. He said, Arden said New Zealand was not obliged to give Taylor legal representation. He's uh, charges over uh, if he's charged overseas. In a second. Nor can they pay for his way home. Good news. Arden refused to stay. He was serious threat to Taylor and represents he's back home. He has contingency plan. She ensures New Zealanders where he's safe from returning jihadi. So this guy wants to uh, open up a medical ma marijuana dispensary. It's just <laughs> a really, really crazy idea, you know. Well, he says if it's legal, yeah. Well, he has very, very high hopes, very unrealistic hopes because first thing he has to do is get out of this prison. Yeah, which seems very unlikely. He also declined to comment whether Taylor's ABC reports he insisted that he's not an ISIS fighter or laments the fact he's been too poor to afford Yazidi slave where, with the extremist group. <laughs> wow, this is... Uh, <laughs> this, 
This is so, so sad. Oh my god, if this is true, it's even wor it's even sadder because this just shows how pathetic this guy is. He was a loser in the he was a loser in the, uh, the in New Zealand, and he went to ISIS and he became a loser there. He doesn't know how to uh, transform himself or change himself. He doesn't know how to seek positive um, seek change in himself to to make some positive changes. I it wouldn't want to be drawn in these comments because I do not want to be seen as as jeopardize my potential case in the future. She said. Okay, so this guy is uh, such a bumbling loser. He doesn't, he doesn't know what he's, <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing though. Like, let's read this other article. Um, elsewhere in the interview, Taylor describes when his public executions on Raqqa and complains about the high cost of purchasing a captured Yazidi woman as a sex slave. Uh, I would go to Masjid and someone would say, "I bought a slave for five or ten thousand dollars," and I thought I would have that kind of money myself, but. Never had the chance, so I'm <laughs> so I stuck. Uh, so I stuck of being married to a Syrian lady. He said, "You know that's the thing I wouldn't advertise if I want to prove my case, right?" <laughs> Taylor became. You know that doesn't um, say that. You know he didn't want to buy. It. Of course you did want to buy. It. You're just too poor and you're too much of a loser to do it, even in ISIS territory. Taylor became notorious in October when he sent a series of ISIS, ISIS propaganda without switching off his Twitter geotagging function. Uh, we already went through. He spent 50 days in prison for that. Another widely uh, reported claim, Taylor declared he was not a jihadi, burned his passport, and whatever. This guy's contra it's contradictory report. I'm sorry for causing so much trouble. He's been um, a bit too heated and flamboyant in my approach, he said, acknowledging that he was a couple of years in prison if granted permission to return. New Zealand uh, PM Jacinta Ardern, the country has no obligation to... All right, I'm just repeating myself at this moment. So, this guy... Deserves to stay in. <laughs> this guy's a freaking tool. He's such an idiot. Look at the look at his face. He doesn't know what he's doing. He is a low IQ idiot that doesn't have any idea what he's actually doing. Hmm. Oh, this is gonna be a fun video to make, guys. So if you like my content, don't forget to like, leave a comment, and subscribe to PewDiePie. Okay.